Hi, this is Ken Pyle with VOD. Today we'll be looking at, and I really mean looking at, the Packadate Video Over IP phone and its service. We'll be talking to Brian Martin of 8x8 Incorporated. But first, let's look at this phone. Now I'm going to uh, employ a trick here of cinematography that probably has, has never been deployed. Um, using a basic mirror, I will uh, adjust it so we can actually see the, um, the screen uh, over here, a little camera, all built into one integrated unit. The thing that really makes this phone nice is it's simple to use. You've got the handset, just like a regular telephone, and a regular keypad, just like another telephone. It also has a nice menu set up such that you can uh, have a phone book and those sorts of things and it's very simple to use. I've not looked at the um, user's guide once since uh, I've been trying this in the last month. Uh, it also has some features on the back which I won't show you, some audio, video inputs, outputs. Uh, it also has a very neat little paperweight here. Actually this probably makes it worth it alone. It's a speakerphone, um, a very nice uh, heavily weighted uh, speakerphone. I'm probably distorting the audio by, uh, by doing that. But uh, uh, I found the service to uh, be quite acceptable. Um, I've wrote a review on the Packet 8 service a couple of months ago, and I would say this uh, phone has uh, lived up to that review and, and probably exceeded it. So we'll be talking to Brian Martin about that and other topics of interest in the next couple minutes. So stand by and I look forward to, uh, to hearing from Brian. Thank, Thank you. Like, um, uh, well, welcome, Brian, to, uh, to the VOD View, and uh, thank you for uh, spending some time with us. Absolutely. It's great to see you, Ken, uh, even though we're not in the same room <laughs> that may be That may be better, considering uh, when I get to my second question. Um, <laughs> so, so, Brian, uh, who are the target customers for your uh, video telephone? You know, it's really anyone that has high-speed Internet access, um, but fundamentally we're targeting residential users first, and there's a, a core reason for that. We've been selling video conferencing technology since about 1990, and we found there's a there's a huge human hurdle to get over in selling this type of technology to the masses, and it's it's really that there's only a certain group of people that really really want to see each other in a phone call, and those are uh, people that are in your family, people that are separated by great distances. It's a very personal experience, and the example I always give is, you know, if you were my editor and I, I had to call you up and say, you know, Ken, that article, that project I've been working on, it's not going to be ready for. Uh, two more weeks. I just I, I can't, couldn't get it done. It's going to be late. I don't want to see you when I make that call. I don't want to have to look <laughs> in your eyes and tell you I'm going to be late. And you know, while there's great um, verticals that are available in the business world, things like interviews. You know, let's do a video phone interview before I fly you out. Uh, security, telemedicine. There, there are verticals there. But we think that the mass audience is really the home consumer who has high speed internet because. Uh, those are the people that have people far away that they want to see. That's how you get around, I guess, some of the cultural issues and you know shifting people's behavior. Exactly, and and I you know I'm a big believer uh, that it's going to be a while before people get away from you know the familiar ten keys that we've got, the telephone keypad, uh, the the phone as an interface is going to be there for a long time. So just adding video to that experience, um, you know, is a huge, huge, huge leap forward, and it, it's going to take a while for people to get used to it. What um you know, I guess along the lines of culture, um, you know, this seems like it'd also be good for people who work at home. And um, uh, and I noticed on your website you have a little uh, a brochure on etiquette, which I failed to probably read, and I probably should have. Um, but uh, is that does that come into play too? Yeah, it does um, because it's. I mean, it's so new. I you know, the reason we put some of those guidelines out there is because you know we have a lot of strange video calls with people who are using the service for the first time. Um, my favorite is people who ignore the fact that you can see me and I can see you, and they'll they'll clip their nails or they'll you know do this the whole call. They won't ever you know make eye contact with you. They're just used to using a phone that way, um, and so we just you know we want to put some guidelines out there that hopefully will improve the uh, quality of experience for people that are trying it for the first time. Yeah, and by the way, when I look away, it's because I'm recording this, so I'm making sure the computer's working. I'm not <laughs> okay. looking at my email. I don't hold it against anyone. <laughs> but that is a good point, though. You really have to pay attention, and that, um, you know, I wonder if... You do. I, I can't I can't do other work here during the interview. You... I can't be typing away over here without you knowing. I'm exactly. It's another reason that in the business world, it's... Uh, 
you know, we're all productivity and efficiency freaks these days, and we all do multitask. So, again, it's, it's an example where it doesn't fit into the, you know, the old way of, of doing your phone business. That's a good point. So, from a, um, you know, how does this phone differ? You know, you guys have been doing this for a long, long time, since the last uh, century, really, um, well into the last century. Uh, what makes this yeah. different from, you know, previous attempts? Yeah, well, again, number one is price. Um, you know, we've been one of the pioneers of really trying to drive these technologies to the masses. And, and of course, even our Packet 8 voice service, uh, we're big believers that for mass adoption of voice over IP, there's, there's got to be a price advantage to get people to switch. Um, these phones that we're using are $299 each after a manufacturer's rebate, and we're actually, through the end of the year, offering two for 500 um, it's not the ultimate price point. We know that for every hundred dollars less that we can sell the phones for, we're going to sell, uh, you know, ten to a hundred fold number of phones because it's it's easier to try. Um, certainly, the video quality that you know your readers can can actually see um, is is improved dramatically, and that's just a direct benefit of having more bits available. Um, you've either needed special connections or dedicated connections in the past, or uh, worse, a modem, uh, and we had a, a whole product line of H324-based phones that uh, we marketed under the name Via TV, and the video quality just never lived up to people's expectations, which is understandable because we all come from, uh, everyone knows the concept of a video phone, but when they actually go see, you know, what's reality on an old dial-up kind of connection, you know, it's, it's not what they had in mind. Um, and then I think the, the most important thing that, that we believe is radically changing or will change the way people use their phones is that this is actually built on a voice over IP platform. We're really just adding video to what is basically a voice over IP service. Um, and what that means is that, that the phone itself still works like a regular phone. You have caller ID, you have dial tone, you have busy signals. Uh, if you call me when I'm not here, you go into my video phone's voicemail. And so it enables people to just pick up the product and use it uh, instantaneously without any special training. You, if I just point you at it, um, you pick it up, your dial tone, and you call a phone number. And whether that's a voice or video phone number, the, the call goes through as you expect it to. Um, and so, you know, the old days, video, if you went to a video phone or you were using video conferencing equipment, it was only because you were going to make a video call. And now we've got a video phone service that actually replaces your regular home phone service. You can even port your home phone number to our video phone, and, and people will never even know that you've joined the video re revolution. Yeah, I've <laughs> been using it to call people, and uh, like I mentioned in the introduction, um, you know, I found this uh, to be as good as the, what I reviewed a couple months ago, and, and maybe even better. Yeah, it's the same yeah. service. I mean, it's the same voice over IP calls underneath for the voice, and then... Uh, like I said, we we open video channels and, and deal with the video world with the camera and the screen. So, um, from an independent telephone company perspective, um, you know they would be interested in providing this kind of service. I'm sure to their customers as a value add. Absolutely. How how does uh, how does eight by eight work with uh, independent telcos? Yeah, we have had a wholesale uh, private label offering uh, that we're certainly working with various service providers, not just telecommunications companies, but uh, even some other folks that may have been in other lines of business that want to get into the phone business. And, you know, as you know, voice over IP um, is the great equalizer. It enables anyone to get into the business. So we do offer uh, both our voice and our video service on a wholesale basis. Uh, we can enter into any sort of agreement. Um, because we're a full service service provider in this space, you know, we can do Tier 1, Tier 2 support. We can do billing. Uh, but our preference is actually to work with providers that will take uh, ownership in that. Most of them want to take ownership in that. Um, and, and so that's, that's the easiest way to, to really get into this space is to give uh, someone like ourselves a call and say, you know, I'm interested in offering a voice over IP service offering. What can you guys do for me? And so, for instance, you know, I'm, one of the scenarios, some of the independent telcos might already have their own voice over IP network. Um, but they'd want to, you know, provide your phones and, and maybe some of the back office or something to, to go with it. But it, yeah. is that an option? Everything we're doing is uh, standards-based. It's all SIP. This is, you know, really the world's first standalone SIP video phone, and um, it, it's all part of, you know, our overall offering. And, and whether someone needs just a partial solution or they need a whole end-to-end -end solution uh, from us, we can work with them. On okay, that. good. Uh, people have been asking me that, and I always... Uh, I never know the answer, <laughs> or yep. I, I'm afraid I didn't know the right answer. Um, That's correct. As well That's as even correct. to the PC, perhaps, at some point? Yeah, you know, the, the PC's kind of a, we, we have a love-hate relationship with it. Um, 
it's certainly a platform that has all the technical capabilities to deliver these types of services, and yet at the same time, you know, what our focus groups and our own past experiences with um, consumers, uh, at, again, at large with soft phones, is that, and I, I think Microsoft has proven this, I don't know how many times, that, that the PC today does not make a good telephone mm-hmm. platform or telephony platform. Uh, and that's where that's where the love-hate comes in. We've got this incredibly powerful processor that can run all sorts of neat apps, and yet it's not presenting a, an ease-of-use paradigm or even a telephony use paradigm that, that is amicable to people adopting it as that platform. So I, I'm sure that'll change, but that's probably part of the 20 years it's going to take us to get away from, you know, I'm going to walk up to this, I walk up to any payphone, and I know how to dial a call. That's not true on the PC today. And I don't think it's going to be true on the PC for a while. The only thing we've been able to think of is to put the same uh, telephony screen up on, you know, up on the screen as an image and tell people to pick their mouse and dial just like it was their finger. And there's a lot of people that still can't do that. Mm-hmm. So it's it's a difficult platform to work with in this environment with mass consumers. Yeah, and I, and I agree with you a hundred percent. I mean, I've had difficulties uh, with, with those kinds of things. Um, you know, I wonder if in the future there might be some kind of hybrid where it's a USB phone, video phone, mouse that plugs in or something and. Yeah, so in any case, I mean, our strategy has been to really focus on the standalone appliance. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we emphasize in our advertising that no PC is required. You, know, you need a web browser to basically... Yeah, you know, you know, it's ironic that you said that. <laughs> My computer just, it stopped capturing for some reason. So let me hit the prospects of, of some kind of bridging function then to go between cell phone calls and, say, the packet 8 phone calls. Yeah, we, we you know, there's a... It, not, not necessarily us with the equipment, but there's a lot of companies out there that are already talking about uh, H324M to, you know, various formats that, that would be compatible with this type of service. So um, I, I think, you know, we're all waiting for the 3G wars to kind of settle out and some of those standards to settle down, uh, if nothing else, in their pace of evolution so that we can figure out the right ways to talk with those networks. But um, the, again, the, the beautiful thing of being in an IP world is those types of problems are nowhere near as complicated for standards committees like the IETF, which operates at light speed compared to what uh, you know my own experience with the ITU has been. Um, and, and so interoperability, I, I actually think, gets much easier um, as, as IP um, foundations you know continue to expand into different types of devices. And, we, certainly, IP is going to take over the cell phone world, just like it's taken over everything else. Mm-hmm. That makes um, that makes sense. Um, I guess moving to the commercial side of things a little bit, um, do you anticipate that uh, there might be things like advertising of some sort, video advertising that maybe comes in while you're in hold and things like that? Yeah, um, I mean, certainly this type of platform for entertainment applications is is ideal. So we we believe that services will evolve that focus on that type of application. Um, I, I'm never a big fan of advertising, but it's certainly an opportunity with with a device like this. Not so, you know, for the the rest of the time when the phone is sitting idle on your desk, the mm. screen is just sitting there blank. Um, or I think a, a huge opportunity might be when you're in a voice call and the other person can't see you. And, okay. You know, we have nothing to use the screen for right now. Um, you could either put up advertising or you could put up a game that, you know, if I'm really bored talking with you, Ken, I could, uh, and you're on your cell phone, you don't know that I'm on my video phone. I can be sitting here doing mail, playing games, who knows what else. So I think there's definitely those types of, um, of applications that, that will apply themselves, whether we want to or not, uh, to this type of service. Well, and that's, uh, I guess, a question. Uh, is it the type of thing that lends itself to maybe an open source community where, you know, you could port other kinds of, you know, games yeah, and, and stuff on here. Yeah, and, and certainly some of the devices we're working on in the labs um, will be much more open, uh, where, we, where we kind of, I, I, my own belief is that voice over IP and, and video over IP and this type of communication application will just become a building block that all sorts of other developers can, can use in building their own applications, and, and certainly we support that point of view, and I think it's going to be a natural evolution of this type of service. Yeah, I mean, I could certainly see having some storage in, in the phone itself. Yeah, just you, you could start doing it. Once you've got the screen there and uh, you've got a powerful processor in there, there's all sorts of things you can do. Yeah. Um, and it, it sounds like, um, you know, this is something that uh, hasn't really been used yet for kind of the uh, one-to-many broadcast. Um, it sounds like that's That's right. Different and, and actually, um, 
you know, that's our probably number one requested feature once people try the video phone is they immediately say, oh, can I, can I put five of these out here and get the whole family on? Or, you know, I want to run my Monday morning staff meeting and see every one of my offices in a different window. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and what you're talking about where, you know, I could do a, a promotional broadcast to the Internet and just use this device as uh, a very inexpensive way to encode and transmit my video. And so, again, in, in our labs, we're, we're working on all of those um, enhancements to the service, and certainly some of those will involve um, things that we can charge additionally for and, and additional opportunities for revenue. So we're, we're pretty excited about some of those. Um, today, it's a, it's a very easy to use, which I think is the most important thing, high-quality uh, point-to-point communication service, but it's going to evolve very quickly. Well, it's, it's very exciting, Brian, and I really appreciate your time uh, today and appreciate you uh, giving me the chance to, uh, to review the phone. I appreciate you trying it out, and uh, we'll be seeing each other more often, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> very good. Thanks, Brian.